Well, this came in from a private client who was just clearing out a few things, and it's absolutely stunning. It's by Jacques, who make the best croquet sets and are well known for doing so. In fact, I think it still sells through, um, used to sell through Lily White's and Harrods. Um, probably dates from about 1910, maybe 1920, that sort of date. Um, and it's just the most beautiful thing. The colour of the wood in both the mallet heads and the sticks mm -hmm. um, is just lovely. You don't get that anymore. And you don't tend to get them with stands. And this is a carry stand, as you can see. You've got the plaque for jacks is there, and all four boards are still in place. So really, really nice thing. Very unusual to have it like that. And just what you want, really, for the middle of the summer. Next thing I'd love to talk to you about is this Satsuma bowl. We see quite a lot of Satsuma comes in um, quite often. It's Japanese. This one probably dates from about 1890, uh, 1910, uh, 1900, that sort of date. You do get it made a lot later into the 20th century. But when you get a lovely early piece like this, you'll see, I'm just going to put the box down so that you can actually have a look at the actual bowl. You'll see the amount of incredibly intricate detail on it. Um, you've also got this very fine decoration all the way around. And this gilding, which is also very indicative of it. Then, even better, if you turn it over, we have a signature. And so we actually know who the potter is. I've probably got that upside down because I'm not actually looking to see where the signature is, but you can probably put your attorney around like that. But it is a really, really pretty piece. And it's also fascinating because one of the things you see in these sorts of pieces of ceramic are the interiors of Japanese homes and, homes and gardens and so on of the time. And here you can actually see the detail of ladies, and I think they've got their children with them. We've got two little boys here. We've got the chrysanthemums all around. And we've got another wonderful, slightly earlier piece of Japanese ceramic in the middle of the, pic of the um, illustration. It's just beautiful. So I think that's going to be a really nice surprise for ourselves. So the next thing I'm talking about, and funnily enough, all the things I'm talking about are from about the same sort of period, so we're talking about the end of the 19th, beginning of the 20th century, is this beautiful, can you see it from there, the beautiful, beautiful little watercolour portrait of a young girl, and she's just fabulously executed. In fact, if you see it from further away, you get an even better idea of how brilliant this artist is, um, and the impression, slightly like impressionistic style that's coming through in the way that they've rendered the watercolour. She's particularly pretty. I love the work here on the collar. Um, but her face and her hair are very, very attractive. And this is the sort of thing that really makes a portrait fly. Because to be honest with you, some portraits, unless you're related to them, you may not want to have them hanging in your house. <laughs> this one, on the other hand, is just beautiful. Oh, the three pictures here. They're, mm -hmm. they're like three star knots, I think. Yeah. But particularly the little oil painting of the lurcher. Look how sweet she that is. She is the expression on her face. And when you look into it, you can see the sheep in the foreground here and the farm buildings. It is just, just divine. <laughs>